Halloween after eyelid surgery? If I can't use facial fillers, what are the options I have for these results after eyelid surgery? I'm five months out now, and the sunken look seems to be getting worse as time goes by. Thank you for your question. It's five months since you've had your lower eyelid surgery and you're, you're very concerned about the hollowing uh, of your lower eyelids. The photos you submitted has been very helpful because you've submitted different pictures and different types of light uh, and it certainly is, is helpful. I'll share with you a little bit about my approach to addressing what is often perceived first as hollowing under the eyes. Now, not seeing your preoperative photos, but assuming that you had significant enough puffy bags under your eyes that you needed to have lower eyelid blepharoplasty, I can also tell you that the lower eyelid position looks very, very good. And so I think that the, the goal of the lower, lower eyelid blepharoplasty was essentially accomplished, which was to take away the negative of the bulges of fat underneath the eyes. Now, in my practice, what I do is I first also give a patient a general overview of the overall changes. You see, I wrote a book a few years ago called The Fine Art of Looking Younger, and it was based on the idea that people should need to understand that facial aging or genetic changes are a combination of both volume loss and sagging or descent. So very often when someone comes in and has bags under their eyes, if they happen to have cheeks that look a little bit flat or if they, 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 there's a lot of sagging, I bring to their attention that the area of the eyes did not change necessarily in isolation. Now this is an exception when we're talking about somebody who is in their 20s or younger. But for a lot of people who come for this procedure, who are in their late 30s and beyond, facial volume loss is a very significant part of the overall look of the person's appearance. The challenge is, is that of course, when we have a problem such as bags under the eyes, we focus on that and we literally magnify it and then we don't look at anything else. So what I'll do is just show, bring to this to my, the attention of my patients and explain that if after the surgery you have any concern about relative hollowing under the eye, we will address certain key anatomic elements that are associated with the perception of hollowing. And what elements are those? Well, those elements include the tear trough area, and that area is very important when it comes to having um, the, the overall appearance of the eye look good. The area of the eyelid cheek junction, sometimes referred to as the V-deformity, and that's at the rim in the lower part of the eyelid. Um, and it, it's an area where when we're younger, that area has a volume, it has a layer of fat and a little bit of a cushion there. When, uh, either genetically when people are young or with age, that area becomes depleted and you start to see an effacement or a revealing of the bony structure. And then there's the malar and submalar space, submalar areas. And those areas can become very, very flat. So my typical strategy for the tear trough area and the V-deformity area is to combine hyaluronic acids such as Restylane with platelet-rich plasma. Uh, platelet-rich plasma is derived from your own blood. It is spun, blood that is spun down with it, like a typical blood draw after it, it, you do in a lab. And what we'll do is we'll spin the blood down, we'll, we'll concentrate the platelets and the growth factors that are responsible for healing. And we've seen a very nice synergy in the quality of skin, the volume correction, and the overall look with this com combination of hyaluronic acid and platelet-rich plasma. Certainly, hyaluronic acid alone is a perfectly good filler. Um, there is, all of this is still art, and uh, very often our patients are, are, are a little frustrated that they have to do this as maintenance, 
But when you are dealing with j facial changes, not everything is surgically correctable. And that's why there's a role for fillers and other things to add correct volume. In the malar and submalar area, we can do things such as fillers, for example, like radius or fat transfer, as well as more permanent uh, procedures such as the placement of submalar implants. Every patient has to be evaluated individually and there has to be communication to get a sense of what are the things that are bothering them. I would, uh, I would advise you not to do anything to treat the, the concavity or the area from the eye, eyeball to the rim which you may feel is hollowed because frankly a lot of people have tried procedures such as fat transfer in this area and unfortunately because of the variability in healing fat transfer can result in chronic swelling and um, a lot of irregularities and in my and that's coming from my experience uh, people have come to me from all over the world with fat transfer where there were nodules and bumps and they just wanted to um, get rid of them. And it, just, it became a very complex surgical procedure to try to get improvement. So I think you need to uh, communicate with your doctor who did your surgery and discuss your concerns about the hollowing. I am certain that this doctor has probably heard these concerns before and probably has some good ideas about how to address them. So again, think about volume uh, restoration, think of the strategy for that volume restoration, and think outside of the immediate area of the eye where you had the fat pockets reduced. Think of the eyelid to cheek zone as the tear trough and the cheek area. So I wish you the best of luck. I hope that was helpful and thank you for your question.